Welcome, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the zone you might be maybe in. Um, I am Nikhil Sinha. I'm a product manager at Google Workspace, and I'm joined here today with Luke Camry. Hey, Luke. Hey, Nikhil. Great to be here. Thanks, Luke, for joining. Luke is also a product manager in the Workspace product portfolio, and together we are going to talk about trusted collaboration for a hybrid work world. Now, a quick logistical item. As we go through the presentation, we will be talking about specific new capabilities that we are announcing today. If you are interested, you can sign up for those using the forms link below. Uh, don't worry about the forms link on the screen. It will be shared as a part of the video description and also be sprinkled towards the later part of the presentation. Before we dive deep into trusted collaboration, we want to spend a moment on what is at the core of the recent attacks that you may have heard about. If you notice, most of these attacks arise as a part of phishing emails, where a malware is installed either through the email itself or through one of the attachments that may be within the email, which essentially is an indicator that bad actors are targeting the limitations of some of the legacy systems that are existing in today's world. And these attacks are getting sophisticated by the day. You might have heard about solar winds, which was a supply chain attack that impacted 18,000 customers. Similarly, WannaCry and Hafnium are others that created such a big mess for some of our customers. And what we want to share here is these bad actors are really good in what they do, and they will find ways of infiltrating and getting to your data, which is why we think about security very seriously and we have built up security from the ground up. There are four key pillars to our philosophy for securing workspace by design. The first is that we are a cloud first application, which essentially means that you're not running any on-premise servers in your environment. All your infrastructure is being managed by Google in the globally distributed data centers. It's really beneficial, especially when it comes to applying patches that Google can apply on the fly without waiting for your system admin to do the job. The second is that we try to detect everything at our global scale inbuilt into the product. We call it being built from within rather than being bolted on as a third party plugin or an add-on. We do not require any of that because we believe that security is fundamental and needs to be baked into the product itself. The third important pillar is to make sure that we are protecting everyone. Examples within this category are the use of account security keys or the millions of endpoints, both Windows machines or mobile devices that you can manage using Google Workspace. Last but not the least, we were the pioneers of Beyond Corp, which is essentially the philosophy of not trusting anything by itself. Within Workspace, you get an offering called context aware access, which allows you to use the user's identity and the context of their request to make sure that they can get access to the required application. I'll give you an example. If you are a user or one of your employees is trying to access Gmail or Drive from a coffee shop in Thailand, it represents a different security posture as opposed to someone who is trying to access Gmail or Calendar or any of the other apps from one of your offices. Similarly, we can also look into the device state, the device health, and use those as vectors before providing access to a given, given application. What we want to talk about a little bit more today is how does Zero Trust extend beyond the applications to your data itself? And step one in that journey is really articulating some of the trust boundaries that exist around your data. We think about the trust boundaries across three different pillars. The first one is the cloud service itself, in this case, Google. The second is your employees, who we deem to be great employees who are trying to do their job on a given day, but at the same time may trip into some of the unknown. And lastly, no matter how secure your internal systems are, you'll always have the threat of outsiders trying to access your data. What we'll walk you through today is the cloud employees and outsiders trust boundaries and give you some indicators and some tools of how Google Workspace can help in trusted collaboration. Let me start with cloud first. 
the notion here is to make sure that the cloud service it should is inherently trustworthy. Is the cloud service provider doing the right thing with your data? Are you sure and do you trust the cloud with all the confidential information to be hosted within the cloud service? And the way we think about it is really twofold. Step one is to make sure that we can provide you with control of your data storage and access. What does that really mean? It, it means that you as a customer can choose to locate your data within US or the European regions based on a given OU or a group. Now, this is the 100% same experience as a commercial, for all commercial customers, no GovCloud is needed. And more recently, we have launched the fundamentals data, fundamental data regions, which is essentially a tool to cover all your primary data at rest across eligible SKUs. The next layer in terms of making sure that you have trust in your cloud provider comes through what we call as assured controls. It's really made out of two parts, access management and access transparency. Access transparency allows you to view logs about any access by a Google staff. And access management takes it a step further by making sure that customers can actually limit the Google staff support to actions from US persons only. These controls are baked into your product today and is generally available for you to use and consume to make sure that you can rely on the services provided by the cloud provider itself. Recently, we took this a step further by introducing what we call as client-side encryption. Client-side encryption is a tool which allows you to have direct control over your encryption keys. And more importantly, any data is encrypted by the browser prior to upload to the Google servers, which means that Google cannot decipher this data without explicit access control provided by the customer themselves. You may choose to use one of our partners in order to drive the segregation between Google that is performing encryption and key management, which is being done by yourselves. And some of the partners that we have in our ecosystem are listed here in the slide. Now with that concept in mind, we wanted to relay that we are on a journey of making sure that client-side encryption can be made available for a multitude of applications, which is why today we are announcing three new betas for the product portfolio. First is Drive for Desktop. As you know, Drive CSE or client-side encryption was launched for the Drive web interface, and now we are extending it to desktop as well. Next, and excitingly, we are announcing the beta for Google Meet, which is the notion of performing encrypted calls, encrypted video messages that you can start using in a, in a beta environment. And lastly, if the choice of our partners is not something that fits the bill, or if you want to build your own key service, we are publishing the API specs so that for customers who are interested in having full control over the build of the key service may choose to do so. All of this is available if you sign up through the link at the bottom right. But what's important to recognize here is while we are announcing our journey across different applications, our vision is to take it much further and to make sure that we can provide consistent experience across workspace. Let us show you a quick demo of what that really means. Managing compliance needs for cloud products can be very challenging. Let's take a look at how end user collaboration can work with customer controlled encryption keys. A user shares the design documents for a US Navy contract with their partner. The email is encrypted by the client. While this discussion started as an email, the collaboration continues. The partner decides to set up time to review the materials and go through the slides together. And with a single click, the calendar description and attachments are encrypted. Now when it is time for users to join the meeting, they can hop on the call with a clear notification of the additional privacy that's offered as a part of the call. The media stream is client-side encrypted, utilizing the same centralized keys that are managed by the administrator. The settings are managed through a unified UI, and administrators can set up the functionality for each of the product on a per OU or a group basis. And a rich set of telemetry helps them understand the usage 
a client-side encryption within their organization. That's just one quick example of native end-user experience powered by customer-controlled keys. We hope that this demo gave you a sense of where we are headed. Let me hand it over to Luke, who is going to talk to you about our vision and the rest of the areas within the trust boundaries for your data. Luke, over to you. Thanks so much, Nikhil. So the video that you just saw is a picture into the unified vision that we're planning to bring to client-side encryption. We're looking to bring it to all workspace apps and support all key user journeys across our product suite. And remember that no matter where we bring the experience, we're going to maintain the same world-class user experience, even when you're utilizing client-side encryption. So stay tuned for updates over the coming quarters as we march along towards the vision that you just saw. And we wanted to point out that there are already hundreds of customers using workspace client-side encryption in production every day for their most sensitive data. Airbus, for example, who is a key partner in the development of client-side encryption, is using it every day for their most critical business data at their offices in Europe and across the globe. So now that we've talked a little bit about how you can control your trust boundary with the cloud, let's move on to talking about how you can control trust within and across your employee base. One of our recent innovations here is Trust Rules for Drive, which enables granular sharing controls so that you can set specific trust relationships even within your organization. You can set up internal firewalls, external firewalls, and always ensure that collaboration occurs on a trusted channel with users who should be able to share information back and forth, and that it doesn't happen when users should. We're also excited to announce today Trusted Domains for Chat, which will bring a similar level of granular control to the chat boundary so that you can continue to maintain these consistent access controls across the workspace apps. On top of that, we're also really excited to announce enhanced information security with data loss prevention for Google Chat. This is bringing our latest workspace DLP platform to the Google Chat app. So just like with trust rules and trusted domains, you can set the same admin policies across your suite, whether in Drive or Chat or Chrome. And for Chat, you will actually get real-time synchronous protection so that we can stop data loss before it even occurs. We're also really excited to announce our enhanced classification and data loss prevention product with Google Drive labels. Over the summer, you may remember that we launched badge labels for Drive to support customer sensitivity label classification systems. But we know that manual classification is cumbersome. So we're excited to also announce automated classification so that we can automate the complexity away from users. This is just another way that we wanna push complexity under the hood and optimize for the ultimate user experience of Google Workspace while maintaining our reputation as the most secure cloud. Now for our last section today, we wanna to talk about how you can manage trust with outsiders, both genuine outside external partners that you need your employees to collaborate with every day, but also potentially malicious actors who are seeking to exfiltrate your data and do your organization harm. The reason that we're able to provide best of breed protections for anti-abuse and stop phishing and malware at a global scale is because we have the largest data set in the world to learn and prevent these attacks from your organization. Every day we're processing billions of data points to stop in flight hundreds of millions of potential attacks every day, whether against our consumers or the organizations that trust us with their most important data. So that's why we're excited to build on these protections and announce a few new opportunities today where you can utilize our best in class anti phishing and malware protections to protect all of your content in Google Workspace. 
So in June, we announced that we're allowing users to block each other so that your employees can stop bad actors from even sharing with them at the onset. And we also announced that we've brought phishing and malware protection to all external shares, no matter who they're coming from, so that every piece of data that gets shared with your organization from the outside gets checked with our latest protections for phishing and malware. We're also excited now that we're elevating those protections before the user even sees the content. If there's a file that links out to suspicious content, to a dangerous website, or to somewhere that's hosting phishing or malware, we will warn them before they even click on this link. If they do end up clicking on the link, Chrome will, of course, be there to protect them, and our other protections will kick in. But now, this is one of the ways that we try and prevent users from even seeing bad content at the start. We're also excited that we'll enable you to turn on those same phishing and malware protections that we launched this summer for externally shared content for all the content in your corpus. That way, you can prevent against both insider threat and user error and make sure that no matter where the malware comes in, that Google will catch it. All of these are reasons why millions of customers trust us every day at Google Workspace to help them enable secure collaboration. And we're really excited for you to potentially join these millions of customers. So if you're interested in learning more about what we do to help you manage, protect, and govern your data, check out Google Workspace session 205 for a deeper dive on some of these security and privacy features like client-side encryption, data loss prevention, vault, data regions, labels, and more. And again, if you if you're excited about any of the betas that you saw today, sign up for the beta form here at this link or check it out in the description of the YouTube video for easy access. Well, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of our presentation today. So I want to thank Nikhil for joining me. Thanks, Luke. And thank you for putting all the content together. We want to thank our audience. Uh, we hope that you found the video useful, and we hope that you continue, continue to enjoy the rest of the session uh, as a part of next 2021. Thank you, everyone.